This week we're doing a vertical uphill T-joint TIG welding aluminum 11 gauge that's an eighth inch thick or about three millimeters thick and it's a 3F position. So you can see the pieces are kind of nasty. The first thing you want to do with aluminum before you put a wire brush on there and crap up your nice new stainless wire brush or before you put an abrasive on there is clean any gunk uh, with acetone and uh, a cloth or lint free cloth or rag or whatever anything's better than nothing and you want to get them clean like that before you wire brush them or sand them or however else you're going to clean them I've got a nice new stainless brush here labeled aluminum trying to segregate it keep it keep from using it on anything else keep from getting iron particles on it and rust and whatnot and I'm going to give it a little scouring but to be honest with you I haven't found it makes a whole lot of difference as long as your pieces are wiped down really well and not heavily oxidized like been laying outside or something like that but it's not going to hurt it certainly won't hurt a thing it's best practice I'm just saying I've never never seen a tremendous difference on pretty good clean aluminum by uh, hitting it with a wire brush first and a lot of things that you would make people don't want to see all those wire scratches after the fact so I'm going to put a tack on the end here I've got a tapered electrode, 2% lanthanated is what I'm using today. I'm going to swap hands and put one on the other side. You can see I've got a little third hand thing holding it in place while I'm doing that. And here's a problem. Inverters a lot of times put little nodules on the tip of electrodes. Who knows why? I don't really want to deal with that today. So sometimes when I've got those little nodules going on, I, I just round it off by turning the AC balance down really low where there's a lot of reverse polarity in the alternating current and put a little rounded tip not a big ball just a rounded tip on the end so I've got a tapered tip with a ball that'll be, that'll be stable through the whole joint and uh, will light up at low amperages fairly well so I'll, I'll be okay on the ends and I'll, I got a rounded tip that won't change on me while I get up to max amperage. Well, You can see I've got this little apparatus here that uh, homemade little thing where I can clamp pieces at different heights to weld them and, and film like this. And so I'm going to put the piece up there comfortable and I'm going to take a few dry runs and figure out what's the best way to prop so I can be steady. Lots of different ways. One way is always to figure out something just to clamp to and prop your hand on a clamp. Here I've got a little C-tong type clamp from Stronghand Tools and I clamped it on there and that wasn't wasn't exactly ideal. Uh, one way to prop is just carry a prop in your pocket like I do here. I've always got a TIG finger in my pocket and it's going to let me slide up the, the whole joint without going to a whole great lengths to find a place to prop. So vertical is always going to go just a little bit slower than flat or horizontal. You can expect that but you want to try to keep your travel speed consistent you want to travel ahead the same amount of time each time you dip now this is speeded up a little bit just to show you the movement there a little bit but about one dip per second you try to move the torch ahead roughly an eighth of an inch each second you'll be in the ballpark You can see it. I'm going fast and I'm going slow and that's mostly because I speed it up when you're not watching the arc. So things sound a little bit differently. Okay, let's look at the two different uh, electrode preparations. This is with the rounded tip. And I'm watching the front of that puddle and on a fillet weld like this your objective is not to penetrate all the way through. Your objective is to penetrate into the root of the joint and then maybe a little bit past that and that's enough. So you want to watch the front of that puddle and make sure you're flowing metal into the corner. Now here's with a tapered electrode. I notice I am able to keep the weld a little bit smaller with a tapered electrode but that could also be the fact that I let this piece cool off and uh, that, that makes a big difference too. But again, watching the front the front of that puddle, trying to wait until it flows into the corner before I add rod each time. And then I'm joining into the where I started the previous weld, add an extra drip or two, drop or two of metal, taper off slow, wiggle the arc around to keep from 
leaving a crater hole. And that's that. All right, it is time for the TIG Finger commercial now. You know, I make a video every week, every single week. I go to a lot of effort to do it. The only way I can keep doing it forever is to make a little money every now and then to fund the project. So if you've been watching these things anytime at all, you know I've got a product called the TIG Finger. It's a good product, and here's some applications where it really comes in handy. Something small and round like this, where you got a prop close to the weld, and you need to be able to slide smoothly along and make torch movements that are precise, it excels. Small socket welds like this, where you can't walk the cup, or too small to walk the cup, or your cup keeps slipping off if you try to walk the cup, it's, it's, the, uh, it's the way to go. Just put prop the TIG finger right next to the weld, and you've got a, a prop at any given time. If you're in welding school doing joints like this uh, T-joint we're doing today or this lap joint that I'm doing here, it's a way to prop that will be in your pocket all the time. And you know how hot aluminum gets. After you light up on it, if you're propped with your uh, just, a, just a glove a few inches away, you've only got a few seconds before it's unbearable. Outside corner joint, vertical uphill, you can, you'd have to get you some 2 before 4s or something to prop your arm on. That's fine. That works too, but... This, this is just easier. Outside corner joint once again. An 11 gauge aluminum. Here's a, the other side of that outside corner joint. I guess it's an inside corner joint except it's been welded already so it's pretty much like a T-joint. Which is what we're doing today so I figured I'd include this as well. The heat really gets trapped in that trough right there like that. And so if you're propping with uh, without a TIG finger, you got you got a hot you got a hot finger. On chromoly tubing joints like this, sometimes it's hard to find a place to prop. But it is not hard when you carry your prop around in your pocket. Thin wall chromoly tubing joints like this run really well with about 33 pulses a second. I know that looks a little slower, but that's the shutter speed on the camera making it look slower like that. Main thing is you've always got a place to prop because you can get, get your TIG finger out of your pocket, put it on, and prop right next to the weld. Put it back in your pocket when you don't need it anymore because you don't always need it. Pipe joints like this 2 inch 6G joint right here. Some jobs won't even let you walk the cup when you're taking a test like this. So there you go. That is it for today. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.